Passing command line arguments has always been a little bit of a pain in C Sharp and .NET. Let's mash on that. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at pausing command line arguments. Um, so I don't know if you guys got the memo, but the command line is back. This is like a big thing now for, for Windows devs too. It's um, I think it like as far as respect in the community goes. I think if somebody walks by your computer and you have a console up, people just admire you more because oh. you look like you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like back in the day, I used to go into like the computer stores so and then I do like oh what was it dir slash p, I think, and it would just like have this. Uh, I don't know what the flag used to be. Uh, maybe. Anyway, whatever the flag was, it was so like you would, school you would do this to look really intelligent, right? <laughs> well, I would, I would just like leave it running on all the computers, and computers would look cooler, and people would be more likely to buy them. So I feel like I was helping people buy computers. Because <laughs> look at how fast that stuff scrolling across the screen. Anyway. Uh, Today's story is about pausing command line flags. So for some reason, my comments are in a font now that's really small in Visual Studio. So I don't know what I did to that. Uh, but this is this is what I have for this program here. That I want to pause like a connection string, and I want to pause two boolean flags about baseline true and sample data true. So this is actually like a real world scenario that I have for some DB op scripts that I have. Uh, so I started to write how I would do that, and it kind of sucks, right? So I got to find where I have connections. Oh, you know what? I bet because I have a minus minus here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so what? cool. Did that happened. What? Neat. There's some, oh, look at that. You need to see this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. Okay, <laughs> trips, tics, trips and, and tips and tricks. I'll get to <laughs> Not just console arguments, command line arguments, but also comment tips and tricks with Simon Tibbs. Aww. I was hoping, I was hoping you could keep going with this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, this is what I would look like punching command line arguments. What sucks, right? Because I got to go through the the args that come in. I got to find where the connection string is. Then I got to find the next thing, and that that is probably my connection string. And then I can print that out and do whatever I need to with that. And then I get to do the same thing with this other stuff. This other stuff's even worse because uh, they're booleans. So then I gotta like pause that they're booleans. So I gotta do like uh, what does this thing? Spaceline. You're definitely bringing uh, back memories of writing basically the exact same code here. Yeah, and it certainly is painful. Yeah, it just like it sucks. And if somebody puts connection string equals, then all of a sudden all of my parsing completely breaks, and I got to rethink how everything works. All right, like dual dot parse. Oh, that's not the right thing. Oh, just be... You're gonna want to do a try parse and have a variable and pass it in as the output and all those things, right? And, and like, there's a lot of cases I got to handle here, right? Because what if we just we, like we must have a default for baseline equals true. Maybe baseline is normally equal to false. And anyway, this code stinks. Um, so there are a bunch of libraries to help with this, and they are relatively good. So I'm going to create a new project here, and we'll try one of these, uh, and we will call this uh, attempt one to make this better. Uh, so we're going to make use of this library. That I, I feel like it's a Microsoft library, but I'm not actually sure about the, the real origin of it. So that is called system.commandline. Uh, so let's go and so this is our default project. Uh, and we're going to go and add this new get package for system.commandline. Uh, and I have to include the pre-release because I think it's still pre-release. Yeah, uh, so system.commandline.experimental is what we're going to do. Uh, and it's marked as an alpha, so definitely production ready. Okay. 
So this one works a little bit differently. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna build up this open root command here. Root command, oops, that control period on that. Let's bring that in. Uh, and then this is going to contain a collection of options. So a new option, and give it the flag that we're going to pass it. So ring, uh, and we're going to give it um, the the help text for it. Ring, and and into that, we're also going to pass um, kind of what we're doing with it. Uh, so I think it looks like just trying to pass this. Argument. Uh, and then we give it the type to so the string. Uh, so then we're going to handle this. So root command dot handler is equal to and handler. Oops, jar. And For that. Um, dot create. Uh, and here we're going to pass in that it's like a string. And um, this is going to be the This is actually sorry, I'm missing some parentheses here. And here we can do our, our stuff with it. So we're going to do like a string. I should give this up something else. Connection string. All right. So that'll pause everything as well. So this looks better. Uh, the code is a little bit cleaner. It handles a lot of those corner cases that we didn't want to handle before. Um, we can set default values for this stuff. So if we put another option in here and do our Baseline. Uh, give it a boolean, and in here we can set things like default value. It's going to be false. Like that. Uh, down here we would change our signature a little bit here. To um, and so on from that point on. So that gives us some some nice way of doing this, but it is still kind of painful, right? Like we're still writing a lot of stuff to get this to work. So there is another option, which is in system.command line that's even more experimental. I'm going to go and create another console project here. We'll use this for this one. Uh, so this is going to be text two. And I really like this approach that they have done with this one. So we are now going to bring in, I'm just going to set this as our startup project just in case we uh, feel like we're going to use this. Go match new get packages for it. Uh, 
And again, we're going to use pre release and we're going to do line. I think you got a small typo there in the start. Do the sneak version of everything. Uh, even that doesn't look right. S Y S. There we go. There we go. Oh, you would have completed it for me. All right, so we are going to use dragon fruit. Whoa. I don't know. It sounds pretty cool. I mean, I would use it just based on the library name. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is exactly why I use Git Kraken. <laughs> okay. So now things are going to get a little bit crazy because what we're going to do is we're going to replace our main method with this. So string. Connection string dual baseline dual uh, okay. I, I think you just blew my mind right there, Simon. Um, can you also? I mean, these are just parameters into um, the void main, so there we go. Defaults. Yeah. yeah, we can set defaults on it. So if you make connection string, it's just going to be. Ooh, And here at the AOS Dude, Monsters, we fully support putting connection strings in your source code and checking it in to you, repositories. It is useful for this, right? Like, I would actually use this. I have this in my code where I just have it defaulting to my local database. So as a local developer, you can just run it and go. Exactly. Um, and then you can override it as part of the, the build process. Do not, do not put production strings in there, folks. Yeah. And, and also, I was going to mention that uh, we're using Dude as a non gender specific pronoun here. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so this is like pretty much all that's necessary here. Um, what? So, yeah, well, let, let's give it a try. Well, I so, tried to so got to output some of these. So, uh, right, line, connection string. Um, and then we'll do like the same sort of thing here for baseline and sample data. And we'll just maybe try running that. Oh, we should probably get some sort of line at the end here. It doesn't disappear too quickly. Okay, this is where it's going to fail. Let's see if it works. Uh, so we're just going to run this with no options. So we should get like these things passed in. And let's give it a try. Here we go. Okay, so it got the, the defaults. So let's try forcing some non defaults into this here. So new properties and debug and pass in a function string of a That's baseline true. Okay. So that's what we're running at the end. And so my computer will grind slowly. Okay, so we obviously did something wrong with that. Well, that's actually cool. Unrecognized kind of like a base. So I must have uh, typed with that, but that's awesome that it picked that up. And give me proper usage. Yeah, uh, I missed the word line. Oh, did that on purpose to course, show the course. usage printing out. I actually really liked that it showed the. Uh, I, you went away quickly there, but I think I believe it showed the known arguments that it that it were it would be willing to accept. Yeah. So there you go. So this is different connection string: true, false. Uh, uh, and the, the thing that's missing in this uh, right now is, from the previous sample is that we had a really good description of what all these arguments were. So in order to get that in, we actually just give it like a summary here and then put the parameters in. So a hey, connection string. Cool. 
Uh, and this is what will be printed on the command line if you give it the wrong options. Um, so this is really cool, I think. Uh, and the way it does this, apparently behind the scenes, is that it actually modifies, and I didn't know you could do this, uh, it modifies the MS build to point it at a different main method. So it shims in its own main method that still looks like it has like args, a collection of args. Uh, and then that does all the parsing and everything, and then that calls off to your main method. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Do you know if it does the like tab autocomplete thing on the available parameters? I don't know. Um, let's go find out. Uh, While I'm pulling that up, I just want to share that usually when I'm at the grocery store, I walk right by the dragon fruit. But <laughs> the next time I'm there, I'm definitely going to pick one up and try it. Have you yeah, never heard of dragon fruit? I've never tried dragon fruit. Very good. Give it a try. You will not be disappointed. Okay, let's see here. Uh, So, mm, I don't know that yeah, I don't actually know how that. Works. I know I've seen some demos that do that, but I don't know how they did that. So, I was yeah, curious. It doesn't look like it does, but that would be a cool feature to add in too. Yeah. All right, but there we go. That's a simpler way of parsing command line arguments. I'm using this from this day, week, day forward, whether it's experimental or not. Yeah, that looks Very cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for introducing us to this, Simon. This is great. No problem. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us on this episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, uh, reblog, MySpace it. Microblog. Uh, yeah, Friendster it. Um, what's that? Orkut. Woof. Yeah, put it up on your Orkut. All of those things. And if you're really hardcore, get it up on Diaspora. Mm, yes. I backed right. that project on Kickstarter. I have the t-shirt. Oh, good for you. All right, we'll see everybody next time. Cheers. Bye.